Caravan and four drive owners. There are seven really embarrassing mistakes you can make while touring the outback. In fact, they can be downright dangerous and life threatening. I'm Glenn Mike Leedis, and I've been full driving and touring this country for most of my life. And I tell you what, I've made a lot of these mistakes myself. So, what we've done is put this special video together to help you identify them and avoid making them. Ready? Yeah, great. Embarrassing mistake number one. This is a strangely common mistake many full drive owners make right at the start when they go to get their caravan. We're finding more and more with the um, cost of fuel and cost of cars these days, people coming with a lot smaller cars and wanting to buy a larger caravan. And it just doesn't work, so um, th that is happening quite a bit now, for sure. Guys, this is the van we've been talking about. Great. Come this way. We've got to stop here for all the more. Yeah, she's a fantastic van. She's a 2012. Oh. Excellent. Just what we want. Now, oh, fantastic, guys. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, we'll go right this way. Paul? Yeah? Is that your car? Yes, it is. Mate, that's too small. Yeah. What? It doesn't have the towing capacity to pull this van. You could always downgrade to something like this. This is a total stuff up for Paul, but when you're planning to tow a caravan, you have to match the car with the van you're looking to buy. If you're buying a car with towing a caravan in mind, you should get some expert advice on the best car to suit your needs. There are a lot of good mid-size four drives that are capable of towing larger caravans, so you don't have to compromise comfort and fuel efficiency. when people buy a caravan is to first come and look at caravans, see what the weights are, look at what size they're looking at, what towing capacity they may need, and then go and buy a, or go away and buy the car that suits that caravan. There's too many people go, first purchase they make is the car, then go looking for caravans and find out that the caravan they actually want isn't able to be towed by their car. So we recommend always look at your van first and then choose the car for it. Embarrassing mistake number two is one four-wheel driving caravan owners wanting to take long trips must avoid at all cost. Losing control when you overtake a road train. Many of my mates have had encounters where caravans were passing oversized loads and what have you and got on the shoulder and lost control of the caravan and disaster hit. And they start to get a bit of a tail wag and over they go, we're off the road and all their holiday possessions are on board and it's a pretty tragic scene, you know, yeah. And quite often it's a um, thing that the uh, senior couple have saved up for many years and it's their dream 
to tour in their caravan and when it goes wrong it's pretty distressing for them. Look at my life, anyone can see I've been my own worst enemy I've burned bridges, I've built walls, barbed wire fences, man, I've done it all. Rivers of regret, just let them be, won't let them run between you and me. Rivers of regret, just let them be. Rivers of regret I've let you down So much I know Over and over Cause that's how I roll What are you done, Paul? Oh, oh my mistake You okay? I yeah, know them well How are you done, mate? Captured and pitched you Is there any damage done there? That's right, mate just let them be Won't let them run Between you and me Rivers of regrets Just let them be Rivers of regrets Lynn and Paul were lucky this time They lost control But just ran off the road the damage is minimal and they need a bit of a tow, but still a frightening experience for them. Let's go back and see how this situation could have been avoided. This time, the stories of those holiday disasters scared Paul into taking some action. He sought out some expert advice and had some modifications made to the vehicle. He beefed up the suspension, focusing on some heavy duty shock absorbers. A stabiliser system was fitted to the tow bar and a smart braking unit installed, ensuring complete safety, even while towing the largest of caravans. Most importantly, he bought a good UHF radio for the car to communicate with the trucks before overtaking. And definitely, if you're going up the highway, if, if you're going to over take a truck, call him up on Channel 40. And um, usually the driver's only too willing to um, communicate. And he'll give you the, a call when to come around and when it's safe to do so. And usually there's not a problem. Mistake number three is probably the most embarrassing mistake you can make with a caravan and one everybody dreads. Backing the caravan in at the park. One of, one of the fun things in a caravan park we always reckon is watching people back in. And if a bloke and his wife don't bugger up and have a blue, it's a real letdown for us. <laughs> <laughs> and a oh, it definitely is, yes. No, it can cause, sometimes you have to walk Part away, get out of it, but. Yeah. Yes, but on the whole, it yes, can be fun. <laughs> yeah. yes. A lot of people can't yeah. back. They shouldn't be pulling caravans. <laughs> I don't reckon. But anyway, yeah, no, they need all right, as long as they're going in a straight line.
Alright, you blow the system. Looks like that's it for Lynn and Paul. The holiday's over and they'll be going back on a tow truck. Let's go back and see how this situation could have been avoided. This time, Paul listened to Lynn and got some expert advice. They had some vehicle modifications done before leaving on their holiday. A caravan reversing camera was fitted with the wiring system connecting up to the factory reverse camera. And the vehicle wiring was beefed up to carry the extra load all of those accessories placed on it. And they bought two handheld UHF radios to make it easy for Lynn to direct Paul into the parking spot. Okay there Lynn, is that clear? Bit to the right. A little bit more. Well, my name's Glenn Walker. Um, I currently work in the insurance industry, but uh, previously uh, served with the WA Police uh, for around about 11 years. Um, and five of those years I spent up in the northwest, um, stationed in Caratha, and spending a lot of time out on country roads. A case that comes to mind was um, having to go out towards uh, the Nanyatara Roadhouse um, for a vehicle that had broken down uh, because of um, no consideration to the appropriate fuel filters in the vehicle. Um, it picked up some dirty fuel um, and the rest was history. No ability to change the fuel filter on the road, no spares or anything like that. Whereas had they been armed with the spare fuel filter, chances are they would have been back on the road in no time flat. And it's not a difficult job to do. Embarrassing mistake number four. It's a classic. It's one that's so easy to avoid, it's truly embarrassing. going on here? Oh, goodness me. Uh-uh. What's wrong? What's happened? You evil idiot. <laughs> Out of fuel. Yeah. No, I'm out of fuel. Oh, are you joking? No. You can never underestimate things like fuel and water for an outback trip. Petrol stations can be much further apart than you can imagine. Dirty fuel can also stop your vehicle, even with a good standard factory filter. So what could have they done to prevent this disaster? When planning their trip, Terry and Pam decided to put in a long range fuel tank because of the distance between fuel stations and the extra consumption from loading up their vehicle. They also had an additional fuel filter fitted 
to stop any contaminants reaching the motor. Now they've got peace of mind while they're travelling on their holiday. Invariably what we saw um, was two distinct, distinct groups of people. So there were those that were really, really well prepared um, and there were those that were completely underprepared. The thing was, those that were well prepared can invariably get themselves out of all sorts of problems, whereas those that are underprepared um, had to call for help. And often help can be quite a distance away. What's a man gotta do? Just to find a little This is why they're all laughing at George. He and Joe recently made their first trip in the new four-wheel drive, and George wanted to do some exploring. He made embarrassing mistake number five. I'll get it out. Okay. It's all right. No. What's going on? Is that what you're doing? You see how this could have easily ended in disaster. Hopefully George finds some help before they run out of water. So let's go back and see how they could have avoided this mistake. When you're going to travel down some bush tracks, you need at least some basic recovery gear. Standard manufacturer's jacks will not even begin to get you out of a bog. At a minimum, you need a high lift jack, or an exhaust jack, a shovel, a couple of tread recovery boards, then with a bit of work you've got a much better chance of getting the car out of a bog. Okay, who wants to give me a hand to get the car out? Yeah! Alright, let's go. Good. Yay! 
Driver fatigue is a, is a huge problem. Um, and I think what happens is people don't realise how insidious uh, f fatigue can be. It sneaks up on you. Um, when you know people drive for more than a couple of hours, um, they get into the you know into the, the norm, if you like, um, and think they're fine. But what they don't realise is there's momentary lapses of attention, um, and as people become more fatigued, the lapses in attention become longer, uh, and that is a recipe for disaster. It's not really advisable to drive on outback roads at night because of the numbers of animals around. It's a bit like a game of Russian roulette, but sometimes you've got to get somewhere. And despite being warned by his friends, Tony is determined to get home. Leave those bunch of girls' blouses back at home and we'll be making sure we're home with mum tonight, mate. We'll get there mate, we'll be home. Don't you worry about that. I'm a fighter, I'm a never ending itch. Time to jump through the jungle with the nine foot wheel. Got a body, got a booty, I'm a sugar cane. Ain't no turtle, I'm a super sonic cane. Damn. Looks like in this case, Tony would have been better off taking his mate's advice and camping the night. The strain from watching out for animals with the standard headlights quickly brings on driver fatigue and slows down your reflexes. But with the right accessories, he could have made the trip in safety anyway. This time, Tony has taken some expert advice. He's got a good set of spotlights to light up the road and a well-designed heavy-duty bull bar to withstand animal strikes. Now Tony can easily spot the ruse, and if he doesn't, there's a really good chance that he's not going to damage the car anyway. We did see a lot of accidents up in the northwest, and I think many of those accidents could have been avoided um, by some simple preparation. What we see is that people tend to go out onto the highways without really giving a whole heap of consideration as to the, the condition of their, their motor vehicle um, and the condition of the caravan that they might be towing. And sometimes it's just simple, basic stuff. Invariably, up in the, uh, the northwest of the state, when it rains, it rains very, very heavily. Um, and we did see an increase in accidents, particularly with vehicles that were towing caravans. Um, and a lot of that can be attributed to a lack of tread on the tyres of the vehicle that's being towed. Our last embarrassing mistake, and it's probably one that everybody fears the most, driving in the wet weather. See you Friday, okay? You better stay with me. Because our tires are bald. Look, I've been driving 30 years, you know. A bit of rain never hurt me. I'll be okay. Look, I've got to get there. I've got to get there. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, right.
baby. Nice. Hi. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm just about to go into a meeting. Um, I can't really talk right now. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll, I'll see you Saturday, okay? It's all good. Thanks. Bye. Accidents are far more likely to occur in wet weather. Visibility is much lower and it takes much longer to stop. So let's have a look at how this catastrophe could have been avoided. <laughs> Trouble is, even though we all dread driving in the rain, many of us don't maintain our cars as good as we should. Good tyres, the right suspension and loading the vehicle correctly are all essential for safety in wet weather. Hi baby. Yeah, no, it's all good. Ah, no, the trip was fine. No, no problems. No, it's great. Um, I'm just about to go into a meeting now, so look, I'll give you a call as soon as I get out, okay? All right. Love you. Bye. Well, I hope this information helps you avoid these embarrassing and potentially fatal mistakes. You see, a lot of this looks like experience and the ability of the driver, and there is an element of that, but it's really all about good preparation. With the right gear, even someone new to full driving and towing a caravan can appear like a pro. But the main thing is to get good advice. With so much stuff around these days, it's easy to buy accessories that are not suitable and badly made, such as bull bars that'll fold in on your vehicle and even cause more damage than if you had nothing at all. It's also easy to overspend and get a whole lot of things that you don't really need. So good advice is gold. Channel, still in five watt. Um, the good thing about these After all this free advice, I'm gonna finish up with a shameless plug for my own company, Ultimate 4 Drive Equipment. You see, the right advice is what we specialise in. That's because we're real 4 Drive enthusiasts who walk the talk. After years of 4 Driving and towing trailers, caravans, boats, we've probably all made many of these mistakes and we know just how embarrassing it is. We only recommend accessories I've personally tried and tested, so we know it'll do the job. We keep everything in stock at our huge workshop and showroom in Canningvale, Western Australia. All of the best Australian brands of full drive equipment, and we even manufacture our own where we can't find anything else to do the job. And with 20 years in business, we're recognised as Australia's leading transformation centre. If you're in WA, come in and have a coffee. We'd really love to sit down and have a look at your vehicle and see what suits your needs the best. If you're interstate, no problems at all. Give us a call or fill out the form. At Ultimate 4 Drive, we really do take the time to sit down and find out what best accessories are there to suit your needs. I've got to say, out of fuel, don't I? Yeah, 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 yeah but it's, 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 it's a state, it's a statement, yeah. yeah. not a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a question? We'll get it, we'll get it out. It's alright, I'll get it out. It's okay, it's alright. And don't come back with a Prado, mate. Come back with something decent like a Colorado. Hey, hey, Lynn, hang on. You can't say that, mate. <laughs> no, no, the Toyota's a great vehicle, but if you want a really good vehicle to, to do the job, I think you should go look at a Jeep Cherokee. It's just going to be a much better vehicle.
Yeah, it's probably a very good thing, mate. We've got the Prado on hand. If we had something like a Colorado here, we'd have no chance of repairing anything, mate. <laughs> so. Paul, you know, you should have got a Ford Ranger. You wouldn't have had this problem if you had a Ford Ranger. <laughs>